Hello everybody, this is Danny back from Deep South Homestead in the greenhouse today. We are learning some things about our greenhouse. Um, we put only uh, Tuftex panels and one of the things we've realized is with the heavy pollen fall we had, they are covered with pollen and it has adhered to the panels now and it's very cloudy. So our greenhouse is not getting the sun through that it needs to get. Now there's a place down here that is one of the scrubbed right here. Uh, you can probably see the difference in it right there. We're going to have to get out here and we got to scrub the whole side of this. But now that's not, that's not the only thing. We talk about the grand solar minimum. We talk about geoengineering. We talk about all these things. But guys, when I built this greenhouse, the sun in the winter time hit this greenhouse all the way across the whole side here. That's why we done it where we did it. Now, the sun doesn't do that. For some reason, the sun is way far south of here, and it's in a tree line all across here now. So, something has happened. I, I don't know what, but for several years, it's worked perfect. But this year... The sun is not penetrating the greenhouse because one thing, the panels are just a little dirty. We've got to wash them, but that's nothing new. The other thing is the tree line. There, it's way up behind the trees, like I said. And, and God, I don't know what caused that. I don't know if the earth has moved. I don't know. I, I don't have an answer for that. I just know the sun is in a different place than it used to be. And I know that may sound kind of crazy, but as a result of that, we're starting to see some things happen in the greenhouse here. Now, one thing it hasn't really affected is the moringa. The moringa is just going crazy here. It's uh, it's doing fantastic. Um, the the low intense sunlight from the sun is not affecting the moringa. The moringa stays warm in here and it loves it, whether it gets the full sun or not. And it kind of begins to look like a little bonsai tree or something here. But now beside it is the lemon tree. The lemon seems to be doing perfectly fine. Um, doesn't seem to be an issue with it. But we do have these right here, guys. Look at this. Look at this. It's after Thanksgiving. Look at that. Look at the size. I mean, I got big hands, and look at that. That lemon is big as the palm of my hand. Those are huge, but you know what today is? Today is the day that we pick the lemons. We're going to... And lemons are like oranges. You don't want to just reach up and grab them and pull them off the tree. You want to, me personally, I cut and leave about a quarter inch of stem on them. They seem to last a lot longer that way. Look at that. Ooh, man. Let me put these shears up here just a second. We keep these in the greenhouse here. Look at that. I know it's only two, but guys... That's two big lemons. Now the tree, believe it or not, has bloomed and it has some little lemons on it. And we're going to wait for them to see how they do over winter in a greenhouse. We've never actually experienced baby lemons being on the tree through the winter. So we're going to see if they actually grow. Uh, do they fall off? Does the tree change its cycles because it's always in the warmth here in the greenhouse? I don't know what's going to happen with that. It's another thing. We're learning with our citrus trees because if this works and it's able to put the little lemons on and it's able to hold them through the winter, we're going to get some orange trees and we're going to keep us some orange trees in here. We're going to keep some satsuma trees in here because they won't grow any bigger than the container that they're in. And guys, we'll prune them or do whatever we have to do. But if that works, we'll overwinter all of our stuff in the greenhouse here and just grow We'll grow this kind of stuff all winter. So that's something we're learning right now. Okay, now moving on over to the other side of the greenhouse here, guys. Look at this. Look at this here. This is tomatoes we're growing in the greenhouse. Look at that. Tomatoes right there. Look up in here. I probably need to get some of these suckers off, but look at the tomatoes. They're just all in here. Tomatoes all back in there. We come out here every day. They just kind of bump them. A little bit like this or I bump the sticks shake the plant a little bit let them pollinate because there's no pollinators in the greenhouse here and then up above it here now this is something we noticed with our panels being kind of dingy like they are 
the onions see how they're all just falling down here guys they're just they're long and tall and they're just all falling down well what i've done is i've went here with the scissors and i've cut the tops off of them it won't hurt them uh, these are almost ready to get out in the ground so we're going to go through and cut the tops off of all of them so they can stand back up and the onions will be fine this is the uh, savannah sweets from hoss and the sweet harvest from hoss tool so the guys is Wanda has her aloe vera here. Look at this. These things are going crazy. They love the heat of the greenhouse here. Okay, here's another tool tray from Hoss Tool. We got these are the uh, Texas Legends. They're doing the same thing because of the lack of sunlight coming in. They're just kind of falling over. We got to get them clipped off or they'll start standing back up. And then, guys, I've got another little tomato plant over here. I'm trying out. Uh, it seems to be doing good. Uh, it's taken off. Uh, the winter hasn't affected it so far. It looks like it's going to be a good deal. We're going to move on down here. This is a bay leaf tree. We had this here. Got this from Ms. Gemini. Uh, we didn't know how it would do in the greenhouse. Whether it would just uh, sit stunted. But you know what? It's actually growing. Um, and it looks, looks good. We're excited about that. So we're hoping it is going to work out good. And then we've got some more aloe vera. We've got plenty of pineapples behind us here. Those are everywhere. The Malabar spinach is doing really good in here. It loves the heat of the greenhouse. And then, of course, we got the big old giant. Look at this. Ooh, these aloe vera are the giant ones. They keep putting off babies everywhere. And then we have a little one of our pepper plants here. This will be its third year. I don't know if it's going to make it this year in the greenhouse. It's uh, kind of hard to say. We're, we're going to just uh, give it a shot. If it looks like it'll make it, we'll keep it. If not, we'll just get rid of it. Got one more pineapple here. Now, this is an old pineapple. This one's done more two pineapples in the past, and it's done sprouted again. We might get a third one out of it. We have saved the best for last. The, uh, the thing that we love the most there's nothing better than a fresh tomato in the winter time. And guys, we have a pot sitting right here. Look at this plant. I pull it back. Look. Look how many tomatoes. I want you to just look at the tomatoes of this thing. Look at them hanging over here. Just hanging everywhere is tomatoes. It doesn't matter what I move. Look at this. There's tomatoes everywhere. And come, let's check out one more. Look, you just got to see this one. Look at this one. Look at this. They're everywhere, guys. We're just hoping and praying that here soon we're going to have some fresh tomatoes here. Maybe by Christmas, we're hoping. Uh, we can get a little bit more light in here on the greenhouse coming in. Hopefully, if things will heat on up and we'll be able to uh, have fresh tomatoes because what gets me is there's getting to be so many on the plant which means we're constantly having to pour the nutrition to it in order to keep it going we're watering daily putting nutrition every few days to it and i can't complain look at it i mean it looks gorgeous the whole thing with the grand solar minimum is being able to grow our food when it's cold and Wanda and i think we're about to get this thing figured out uh, we were growing in these big old tubs like this. The trees came in. We have since uh, switched to cattle tubs. Lots of cattle ranchers will just give you these tubs if you just go and ask them because they're just everywhere when they put the minerals in them. Guys, we got them in our moringas. We got them, we're starting to put them here. The tomatoes is in them. You can come up about four inches from the bottom and drill your holes. And when you do that, they stay full of water in the bottom, and the top dries out nicely. You can grow your stuff, and it does really, really good. Stay with us as we go through the winter with the greenhouse, and hopefully we'll be able to teach something to us and to you. And we'll all learn together about growing things during the Grand Solar Minimum. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.